And that means our above average temperatures just kind of continue here in 2021 after a very warm 2020 across the state of Minnesota last year tied for the 13th warmest year on record. And also this week, both NOAA and NASA said that 2020 temperatures set a global record. I spoke with NASA climate scientist Tom Newman to understand why the rankings from both uh, organizations were a little bit different and what another record setting year of warmth means for us. NASA and NOAA pegged 2020 as, um, as either the warmest or the next warmest compared with 2016. Um, the two methods take a lot of the same data, but they aggregate and average uh, differently. The differences between the NOAA estimate and the NASA estimate are about a hundredth of a degree. So oh, okay. very, it's a very small difference. Part of the thing that made 2016 so warm was that it was a strong El Nino year. Uh, and it's notable that 2020 was, was not particularly, uh, did not particularly have a strong El Nino. And yet 2020 is right up there with 2016. Um, perhaps more importantly is that the last seven years uh, are the warmest seven years on record going all the way back to 1880. So it's that uh, putting each year in context that really paints the bigger picture of what's happening. A lot of the data that you study is related to the Arctic and Greenland, I see, from your, from your resume. It, it sort of explain why it's so important to track temperatures where essentially nobody lives. So as you noted, uh, I am in the cryospheric sciences at NASA Goddard, and we do study the polar regions. Uh, what we're seeing is that in the Arctic, it's warming uh, more than twice as fast as anywhere else on the planet. The Antarctic Peninsula also warming very rapidly. And the reason it's important is that warming uh, decreases the amount of Arctic sea ice cover, for example. Uh, 2020 was the second lowest year on record for Arctic sea ice cover. And as that ice goes away, the Arctic Ocean warms up. That additional heat can cause variations and does cause variations in the polar vortex, which we're seeing right now. So although the poles seem like a long ways away, who cares what's happening in Greenland? Those changes don't stay there. The Earth is an interconnected system means those variations uh, do impact weather uh, right here in Minneapolis. We know that uh, winters have been warming here in the state of Minnesota and in Wisconsin. And I think people think of climate change or global warming as mainly a temperature uh, impact. But that's not true. There are other impacts besides the weather, right? Absolutely. One of the things we study in addition is sea level rise. So places like Greenland and Antarctica, as it warms up, they melt, those ice sheets melt, and that water goes right into the ocean and increases sea levels globally. Not such a big deal in, in Minneapolis, of course, but certainly coastal communities see uh, more sunny day flooding than they used to, higher high tides than they're used to, and that has a big impact uh, for infrastructure planning when you're thinking about the next highway you're going to build or the next uh, condo on the coast somewhere. I'm kind of curious, do you have anybody in your family or friend circle who sort of questions some of the work that you do in some of these numbers? And if so, what do you what do you tell them? Um, they're always really interested. Um, I think lots of folks do get a little confused sometimes about some of the details because you hear so many different voices saying different things. But when you talk to somebody one on one and you just say, look, this is this is what the data says. Uh, that you know, 2020 warmest year on record or second, and the last seven years are the warmest seven years we've ever measured. It's really hard to argue with data, uh, and most people are really just curious what's happening on our planet. It's also really easy to see all the raw numbers that NASA and NOAA use to calculate their findings, and I've posted links to both reports at wcco.com slash links, Jen.